Hi everyone, we are back. And so now we're going to get into how do we want to export data files in Mathematica. So um, when we're working and extracting and playing around with all these large data sets, it's going to be really, 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 really critical um, that we actually you know, think about and how do we want to be diligent in exporting our data, even if what we're working with isn't in our final form. So the reason why Mathematica can easily crash, um, it's very RAM intensive, and then you just want to make sure that you can start to work with your data sets earlier on, and you might want to have to do some different analysis later. So let's just generate and let's kind of look at an example of how we could simply export our data. So let's just create a 1D list, random real, minus 100 to 500. So as you can see here, so you can shift enter, do that, get the random numbers. And I could export this data file as an Excel file. And if I go and I could look at my my folder here, I've got my test. So there it is. I could look at it in an Excel file. I could also export that same data file as a text file. So just shift enter that. I could pull up the text. Same thing. So Mathematica is great in terms of there's lots of different files and formats that you could save it as. Um, let's look at this image. Um, so I'm looking at plotting basically different components in time. I'm basically shifting my sine wave, right? Um, so I could export this series of images as a video. So exporting the video, it's thinking, thinking, oh great, there we go. So I could open up this video. Let's see if it'll cooperate. Yay, here you go, that was short. So you can see, it's the sine wave. So I could export series of data files as a video as well. So lots of different formats that you could export data files. Now, one of the cool things, or one of the things we have to think about is usually we're dealing with large data sets again. So we wanna basically export a series of files. Um, so the problem here is these, you know, it's, this is a string of text. We can't use our table function to iterate over this. So um, we need to kind of make sure that we can append and add to this data set. So here's a really unique snippet of code. So basically here we're creating a directory. It's going to export a file name and it's gonna to our directory and it's gonna join this name, for example, of these images above here, plots as JPEGs, and then it will spit it out. So I could shift into this code, I could change JPEG, I could make it a MATLAB file, I could look at JPEG, you know, again here, and see, I just saw, here's where the data file is located at. So I'll have to do a little bit of searching. So let's go to C, go to, I think it's users. Let's look at, let's find actually the directory. So let's just make sure here. And then here we need to go to C users app data. C users just demo. Let's just look at app data. And then we could do local. And then let's hope that's local. Local temp. Let's look at our temp. And now we could go ahead and let's search for our little our little file. So that looks pretty recent. And voila. So again, you could go and find your data set. Now I could just scroll through them together. Cool, fun, doing the wave. Uh, so I could do the same thing for my random data set here. So here I'm doing a random real, a list of 100. I'm doing it 100 times. And I could do the same thing with that MATLAB file. So actually, once I'm there, now it's easy. And you could do this as a, as a shortcut too. So uh, especially if you're using Mat, uh, Mat, or Mathematica, excuse me, quite often you may do that. So see, I could look at a MATLAB file. So I could actually take this location here and I could put it in my tab, so temp. Very easy to do, very nice, very convenient, um, and there we go. All right, next time we are gonna start to look at uh, basically linear fits and we will get going. All right, see you all next time. Thanks, bye.